All right, everyone, so this is your first major essay assignment. So I wanted to kind of make a, a good explanation video for you to kind of walk through what I'm expecting and to give you some ideas on where you might go in this essay. Um, so first things first, I want to make sure that you, you download and you save the essay assignment. That's really important. I want you to refer back to it as you start working on your essay. Um, but essentially, the first essay is looking at how we historically contextualize the information that we've gotten from a lot of these different um, readings throughout this unit. And you've looked at a lot of different ideas of what it is to be quote unquote American from these different authors um, post Civil War. So we have a, you know, a fractured nation. We've looked at how our nation has kind of put itself back together. And what does this new America kind of look like? So what I want you to do, your prompt essentially is to choose one of the authors that you've read in this unit. So you have all of your choices right here from Whitman all the way through this week's Roosevelt. Um, you can choose any of these authors. And I want you to develop an analysis of a particular work from that author. So you're going to look at how elements related to their biography, their cultural history, and their sort of larger historical impact um, fits with the written work itself. So the most important thing that I want you to take away from this is that you need to be analyzing the text more than anything else. So you're looking at things like imagery, metaphor, symbolism, structure, tone. Um, that is, should be the bulk of your essay. And then you're going to tie in information about their biography and their cultural impact or their historical impact into that um, analysis of the text. So you can look at how their work kind of create a change within a political, social, economic, or philosophical sphere um, as part of this new American identity. So for example, if you wanted to look at Twain, you could look at Twain's understanding of war and how he treated war as a satirical, um, using a satirical tone, how he basically created a criticism of the war and of war in general. Um, as part of this you know, new America. You could look at someone like Jack London and think about how his text, his naturalist text, and the way that it's written as far as being very sort of straightforward, sort of semi-scientific, um, uh, almost like a documentary, how does that create a new understanding of the West and this idea of manifest destiny tied to it? Um, or you could look at someone, say, like Sarah Orne Jewett, and how does understanding of gender roles and changing gender roles in this new America, um, you know, fit with, with these American ideals of hardiness and, and, and the New England um, coast. And uh, so there's a lot of different ways you could go in this essay. So I've given you some questions you can think about here. So how does the author and the work influence social, political, or economic change? So someone like Zitkala Sa had very specific political change that she impacted through her political standing in later years. Um, how does um, the author and work fit or not fit with this new American identity? So what does it mean to be American? Does being a woman or does being uh, Native American or just being African American, how does that fit with this new identity or how did they fight against something perhaps that was not realistic? Um, how does the author help shape these new American ideals? So someone like Teddy Roosevelt has a hugely influential um, voice in, a, in this, what it means to be quote-unquote American, and you read that in his text this week. Um, and, or how does the author approach the subject matter? So how does it create a polit political or social goal or message? Um, so someone like Du Bois has a very different voice than uh, Booker T. Washington. Washington wanted to use the situation that African Americans were in and work within the system, whereas Du Bois wanted to fight against the system. So how do they do that with different voices or tones in their works? Um, so really the most important thing is why does the author and the text matter? So make sure you really keep that focus on the text. You're going to have to tie the author to the text in all of these cases, um, but really keep the focus on analyzing that text through good, solid literary analysis. Um, you also need to include two research resources in your work. So what you're going to do is essentially find solid resources that support your ideas, and you'll use direct quotes, um, maybe paraphrases, but usually quotes, from those sources to support your ideas. That's how you create a solid argument. You're using experts to support your claims. Um, these research resources, you can find whichever ones you like. 
um, but they really should be credible and they should be sort of scholarly in nature. So they could be things like um, uh, PBS or biography.com or, um, you know, the History Channel. You could use um, any type of information from an education, uh, a higher education site, so something like a college site. Um, what I would not use is things like one, two, uh, what is it, gradesaver.com or one, two, three, helpme.com or schmoop or um, really these are, or, or Wikipedia because Wikipedia can be edited by other people. These are not credible sources, nor are they adding anything to your argument. So make sure you choose really solid sources. Um, you need to have a clear thesis, so a good argument. So you're going to say something like, Jack London contributed to an understanding of the West through his naturalist um, literature story. Um, this is a terrible example, but it gives you an idea of what I'm trying to talk about here. So you're going to create a, a clear thesis with clear main ideas, and then you expand on those ideas with lots of good evidence from the text and from your secondary sources. Um, so you're going to use specific words, phrases, or passages from the text to show what you're talking about. So if you're going to tell me that Mark Twain has uses satire, you need to pull quotes from the poem that show me the use of that satire and then explain why that satire matters. Why does it matter that Twain used satire to critique the war? Um, and that's how you get your in-depth analysis. So your essay needs to be three to four pages in length. Um, and it's due by Sunday, February 19th at midnight. The link will close at that time. So make sure you submit it well in advance of that, that deadline in case you have any type of technical issue or whatever it might be. Um, when I say three to four pages, I also want to make this very clear. Um, that's the minimum page number. You're welcome to write more if you like. Um, but it means you must be three pages at least all the way down to the very bottom of the page. That's three full pages. If you have a shorter amount, I will take off points for that. Um, also, please note that this is how I'm going to be sort of assessing you on a holistic um, uh, level. So I'll be looking for a careful, close analysis of the work and its major ideas. So really sticking to looking at the text itself. And then I'm hoping you'll tie in the author's identity and the historical con contextualization into the analysis of the work. Um, have a lot of good evidence to support your ideas from both the text and your research resources have the proper number of research resources. That's an easy way to lose um, points if you don't have both sources and they're not of the correct kind. Um, proper page length MLA formatting and citations. Again, easy points to lose. Please don't lose them. They're, they're kind of needless points if you don't write the whole three pages and that kind of thing. Um, make sure you have a bibliography as well. That's really, really important. Um, and a fully developed essay structure with an intro, a clear thesis, um, a clear body with some main ideas and good development of analysis and then a solid conclusion which restates your overall argument and your main ideas. And then to make sure everything is clear and carefully organized and edited um, for, for clarity of thought. Um, so I've given you a few ideas of things you can look at when you're writing as far as your textual analysis, your literary analysis. Look at things like characterization, so look at archetypes, who's the protagonist, who's the antagonist, what is the conflict. Are the characters developed? Are they round? Are they static? Are they flat? Um, look at literary devices. So things like simile, metaphor, imagery, personification, foreshadowing, flashbacks. All of these things are really um, important features of a text. Look at the structure. How does it sort of rise in the dramatic arc? What's the, the, the climax? What's the denouement? What is the conflict? Um, is it man versus man? Man versus society? Why does that matter? Um, look at things like the point of view and the narrator. Is it a reliable narrator? Is it a first person or a third person point of view? Is it an omniscient, limited omniscient? Um, also look at literary concepts, things like themes, symbol, motifs, illusion. How is it structured? Is it a poem? Is it a narrative? Um, and then as far as historical contextualization, look at things like the author's biography. Look at the, how the work was written. Why was the work written? How Did it do something? Was it a speech given at a particular point in time? Look at the historical events surrounding the work. Um, also look at the ethical or moral or social issues discussed in the text and why were they prevalent at that time, um, etc. So hopefully this gives you a good idea of what I'm expecting. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me throughout the week. I'm happy to offer suggestions or help. Um, I really want you guys to do well, so make sure you take advantage of that.